Biblical Scholars, and welcome to our first screencast in U.S. history. Uh, today we'll be covering Chapter 3, Section 1, The First English Settlers. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that at any point in this video, if there's something you do not understand or something you did not hear, you are more than free to pause it and go back. This video is meant so that you can experience this lecture and these notes at your own pace. Um, with that in mind, we're going to tweak that read, listen, write uh, mentality just a little bit because we do have the advantage of being able to pause. So this lecture is, again, at your own pace. Um, first, I'm going to ask that you read on your own. Pause it and read on your own. Next, listen carefully to my voice. It may be dull at times, uh, but just carry on with me. Last, I'm going to ask that you pause it again and write. And at any point, if you need to pause, please, please, please pause. Uh, this is what some very smart men in lab coats tell me is the best way to penetrate your brains. So let us continue. Um, the first objective we hope to accomplish today is to answer the question, why did England want to establish colonies in North America? Uh, there were many countries at this point who went out into the world and established colonies. Uh, England is not any different than them. Uh, they began establishing colonies in the late 1500s. The reasons, very simply, are this. Colonies would provide England with new markets to sell English products and important raw materials for English industries. So not only could they make more products with the raw materials they were getting, um, but they were going to sell those raw materials made into products back to those colonists. Uh, they had two attempts in the beginning to set up uh, colonies uh, off the coast of what is now North Carolina on an island called Roanoke Island. The first attempt ended with them abandoning the colony. Uh, they did not do so well. The second attempt, um, it's kind of a mystery in American history. Uh, there was a war between Spain and Britain, and for, for two years they could not afford to send ships to assist the colony. So when they finally were able to send ships back, there was no one left. They vanished completely without a trace. We still to this day have no idea where those colonists went. And with that, we've already completed our first objective. Let's move on to the second. What was life like for the settlers of the English colony, Jamestown? In 1607, a group of wealthy English citizens established uh, the Virginia Company and petitioned the king to uh, give them a charter so they could set up a colony in the New World. They expected they would find things like gold and furs, and they would sell these in the United or in England, uh, along with lumber. Um, they would set up vineyards and mulberry trees, and they would just make a lot of money off all these products. Um, King James I of England did back the project. He granted them a charter. Uh, just to refresh your memory, a charter is a document issued by a government that grants specific rights to the person or company. In this case, it gave them rights uh, to the land that would later become Jamestown. Um, the first colonists arrived in the spring of 1607. It was about 100 men that sailed into what is now Chesapeake Bay and built a fort that they named Jamestown. This would become England's first permanent settlement in North America. Uh, Jamestown did not do so well the first year. Um, they very barely survived, survived, and the reasons were this. Jamestown was swampy, so very wet. Um, Swampland, uh, and that is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Mosquitoes carry diseases like malaria, and that end up, ends up killing a lot of colonists. Another big issue, and we don't think about this as being something that would hurt a colony or any settlement, but the colonists didn't want to do any hard work. They actually expected that they would just go out and search for gold and riches, and that Native Americans would come and just give them food. That was not the case. The Native Americans were very kind, and they did lend them some food, uh, especially from a chief by the name of Powhatan. Um, they, they gave food. It was not enough for the, all the colonists, and by the spring of 1608, one year after they had arrived, 
only 38 of the original colonists were still alive. So by this point, uh, we have answered two of these questions, or begun to answer that second question. Uh, you should have, your sheets should look something like this. Uh, feel free to pause at this point if you need to copy any of these down. Um, and I want to point out that uh, you do not at all have to write exactly what I have put on in these notes. You may summarize them and put them in your own words, and actually um, that often helps us remember them better. But I want to caution you that if you write, if you summarize it incorrectly, you um, don't get the correct uh, interpretation of it, um, that you're possibly hurting yourself on a quiz. So if you think you completely understand the notes and you don't want to write this much, feel free to summarize. However, I caution you to be careful. So if you need to pause to finish, go ahead. Otherwise, let's continue. Uh, continuing on with what was life like for the settlers of the English colony Jamestown? The leadership there, not so good. Uh, the Virginia Company wants to kind of change that. They want to start profiting from this. They've made a huge investment. So they send a man by the name of John Smith. Yes, this is the John Smith that you are thinking of uh, with Pocahontas. She is real, uh, but that is a story for another screencast. John Smith uh, kind of whips these settlers into shape. He establishes some tough new rules, including, especially for the lazy ones, he who works not, eats not. So if you're not going to put in the work to help the colony, you're not going to eat. Um, in addition to these new rules, um, he does do some things that don't work out well in the long run. One of them is um, raiding Native American villages for food and supplies. Um, later on, Smith would be injured in an explosion. Of what kind of explosion? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but um, he's forced to return home to England. Um, while he's gone, Powhatan, that chief who had, who had so kindly shared uh, food with the settlers before, sees this as an opportunity to take revenge and hopefully get rid of the Jamestown settlers once and for all. So he doesn't give them any food, and in the winter, so many starve. By the way, and I forgot to mention this, as James Smith had taken over, um, the Virginia Company had continued sending more and more and more colonists over. So there's more than just those 38 men left at this point. But after uh, the next couple of winters, uh, especially after uh, James Smith goes back and Powhatan lets the uh, settlers starve, they go back down to 60 people. Now we have to remember that the Virginia Company is a business and they want to make money on this massive investment that they've started. So they continue to send uh, settlers to Jamestown. They convince them in any way possible uh, to come and they even have to convince the ones that are already there to stay. And one big way they do that is by offering them uh, more and more free land. All, all they have out there right now is land. It's not really worth much because they don't know what value it has to them yet, but they will find out very shortly. Um, along, after John Smith leaves, they still need that strong leadership there, so they're going to continue to send those uh, new leaders to restore order in that colony. All the things they're doing, though, would be very unsuccessful if they couldn't find income to sustain the colony. Right now, it's not making money, but they discover Native Americans in the area had been growing tobacco. Now, um, tobacco was not new to the Europeans. They had uh, come across it through Native Americans uh, before this, but they discovered it grows well in Virginia. So tobacco becomes a cash crop for them. They make a lot of money from it. Um, because of this new crop they're making a lot of money off of life, begins to improve the Jamestown settlers. Uh, by the early 1620s, Virginia farmers were selling all the tobacco they could grow, and all this new wealth that they're accumulating draws in new colonists from England. More and more people want to live there because they're seeing how profitable it is. Uh, the very, very, very beginning of English colonies 
in America, uh, we see democracy, which sounds really weird. But in 1620, before the Constitution, uh, before um, we were, were actually the United States, Virginia developed North America's first representative government called the House of Burgesses. Uh, in this representative government they created, they could create, these colonists could pass laws and set taxes, but it did share power with Virginia's appointed governor from the King of England. And that governor did have the power to veto any act by the House of Burgesses, but still the first example of representative government and a huge step forward for North America. In addition to this, um, in 1619, we do see uh, the first Africans brought over to be sold um, as slaves in Virginia. Originally, uh, slavery did not look like we traditionally think of it in North America. Um, yes, they were brought over and treated, I mean, they were slaves. They were treated as slaves, uh, forced to do labor. However, at first, um, there was the possibility of them being freed. Um, there would be some sort of agreement at the beginning, and as long as if slaves could work a certain number of years, they could earn their freedom. Some did. Not all, though. Um, permanent slavery, like you are a slave for life slavery, um, and your kids and their kids and their kids, that became more the norm in Virginia in the last part of the 1600s. At this point, you should have something like this in your notes. Um, so if you need to pause, feel free. If not, I'm going to continue with our last objective, which is to answer the question, how did pilgrims manage to survive their first years in Plymouth Colony? Uh, in the 1530s, when King Henry VIII declared himself the head of the Church of England, everyone in England was expected to follow the ways of the Church of England. So, whether you were Catholic or Jewish, um, you were now expected to follow the Church of England, who um, some wished to separate from the Church of England and practice Christianity in their own, Christianity in their own way. Um, these included Christians, these included some newer Protestant groups that were popping up after the Protestant Reformation. Um, people that wanted to split from the Church of England were called separatists, and a group of them had moved away from England and were living in Nether the Netherlands, um, Holland. Um, they decided to get a fresh start, and wanted to leave for Virginia. So they leave for Virginia in 1620, um, and we call these people pilgrims because, to refresh your memory, a pilgrim is a person who takes a religious journey. Because they were leaving for religious reasons, we call them pilgrims. Um, they leave in September 1620 with about 100 people on their ship uh, called the Mayflower. And they set sail for Virginia. They land at a place, though, that is called, now called Plymouth, Massachusetts. So they don't actually make it to where they hit or had intended to. Um, but they kind of see this as an opportunity. Well, because we're not in the king's territory in Virginia, that means that we can make our own rules. So before they get off the boat, 41 adult men signed the Mayflower Compact. This document called for a government that would make and follow just and equal laws. So, think justice uh, and equal laws. Office holders in this government would be elected by the colony's adult males. The Mayflower Compact was the first document in which, ooh, typo, American colonists claimed a right to govern themselves. Pilgrims had a very difficult first winter in Plymouth, just like in Jamestown. Uh, and about half of them die of hunger and disease. It's not an easy life, the life of a colonist, in a strange land that has not been settled before. However, in the spring of 1621, Native Americans provide assistance, um, like providing food. Squanto, specifically, a Native American, brings many seeds of many different plants and vegetables and shows pilgrims how to plant them properly. Um, he also taught settlers how to catch eels in the rivers. This is what your, screen, or your sheet should look like at this point. Thank you for listening, and I hope for you to join me on 
Chapter 3, Section 2. Thank you.